What's going on, music producers? It's Curtis King of Airbit.com here today to explain to you how do you approach difficult customers? It can be a challenging thing. Let's talk about it. Airbit.com. Music producers, no matter what walk of life, no matter what business, no matter what industry, as long as you are servicing the general public, you're going to come in contact with difficult customers. You're going to come in contact, especially in a leasing business, with customers that range from 12 years old to all the way to 28. I remember one time I had somebody that emailed me and was just being ridiculous. He, he was like, man, can I, you know, I see you selling your beats for 30, man, but can I get it for 15? And I was like, no, it says 30. Why? No, sir, that's not how I operate things. And he wouldn't even give me a legitimate reason why. He was like, come on, man. That was what he said. It was just, come on, man. That was his only argument. And I, I went back and forth for a little bit, which I probably shouldn't have done. But I went back and forth trying to figure out, you know, why would you try to cheapen somebody? You know, why would you try to get me to basically compromise my business? My price is my price. Respect that. And he was just like, man you wasted my time. And I was like, how old are you? I'm 12. And I was like, it dawned on me. I said, you know what? <laughs> that was a tremendous waste of both of our time because there was no way that he was getting that beat for half off for me just, just because. And there was no way that, I, I don't know, that <laughs> he should have been trying to conduct business at 12, but neither here nor there. This is something that I have experienced and it just doesn't come in the form of 12 year olds. It comes in a form of grown men sometimes that will hit you when you, you, you email and hit you with some really complex situations. And I always tell producers, especially for longevity, you want to always make sure that you put professionalism first. Now, there are certain situations where you might get angry. You may get pissed off at the things some of your customers say to you, but it is your responsibility. It is part of your reputation. It's part of your particular brand. You have to stand on the reputation of being professional. I think that this equals out to more longevity. I think that you have to look at it from this perspective too. No matter who this person is and what they say, no matter how ridiculous, no matter how big of a lie, in the general public, in the court of law that is the general public, nine times out of 10, you're probably going to lose that battle. Especially if this person has a legitimate reason or thinks they have a legitimate reason to come at you and it gets public and it gets around, people are gonna to look to you to defend your business immediately. They're gonna to look to you and say, well, I've never had that situation, but man, I never, kinda, I never dealt with that kind of dealing with him, so maybe he is difficult when it comes to that. And it's up to you, especially when dealing with people in a public space. You know, it's one thing for them to email you. You can have a conversation. I would even jump on the phone with them so they can hear that it's a human being and not a bunch of words that can be mis you know, misinterpreted. But if it is something that's happening public, there's something that I learned from a book called Hug Your Haters. And this is the way that you're supposed to approach, and which I agree with at least, approaching difficult customers. First step, you get a very hateful comment. No matter what the comment is, you apologize for something. You say, well, I'm sorry that you had that kind of experience. You know, if anything, you basically offer an apology. And then part of that is, uh, what is it? In addition to offering the apology, you're basically uh, uh, offering to compromise the situation, not compromise, but offering to uh, uh, basically alleviate the situation, alleviate the problem. So you say, you know, I'm sorry that this is an experience that you had. That is definitely not becoming of our reputation. You can wear it out if you want. And then you say, you know, uh, please send us an email uh, uh, so that we can get back to you and resolve this issue. Take it offline, okay? You attempted to take it offline. That's, that's the first step. Second, if they're still being combative, once again, you go back and you double down on that and you say, look, 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 look. I understand where you're coming from, but I suggest that you go and you know, hit the customer service and let's discuss this matter uh, offline. If they're still combative at that point, they're not trying to resolve the issue, they want attention. So it's up to you to now stop responding in that situation. This person is not trying to be here for, for uh, a, a resolution. You know, at that point in time, you will have to start to uh, uh, hopefully live upon the reputation that you've already put out there. That's when it comes down to, you know, your customer speaking on your behalf. That's when it comes to your business speaking on your behalf. You know, you'll be defending your reputation until the very, very end. You know, you got to think about these corporations that have been around for 
you know, Lord, decades and decades who one scandal can literally be the ending of that particular company because you are always defending your reputation. Now, aside from that, dealing with dealing with difficult customers, aside from the book, the way that I approach difficult customers, I try to look at it from the perspective of, you know, when they start to get personal and say things that can be really hateful or really hurtful, I have to make sure that I have an inner conversation with myself first and ask myself, do I agree with this? Is this actually the facts of what happened or is this a, 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 a misperception of what happened? And then I ask myself, have I been in a situation where I've misperceived something that, you know, happened? Did I ever get mad at a company where I felt like they weren't listening to me and therefore I felt like going on a Twitter rant and talking about them? Sure. Maybe not in the same manner that this difficult customer is coming at me, but I've been in situations where I have gotten the situation completely wrong. And this could be the situation for them. So have a little bit of sympathy, a little bit of empathy for them in that situation, even when they're being combative. You know, it's your responsibility because you're servicing the, the, the general public. You are a business. Act as if this is your business. Act professional. You know, a lot of a lot of I see a lot of uh, producers, leasing producers who don't realize when you go back and forth with a difficult customer, you may even have some of your 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 customers jump in there and kind of defend you and whatnot. And, you know, sometimes that does play, you know, a very influential role. But nine times out of ten, I would say that that's not the way you want to go. You don't want to get combative with people because there's other people who are on the outskirts watching and that may represent your business not being able to grow because they're looking at you like, yeah, if you handle business like that and, and if you're that petty, I probably shouldn't invest my money with you. So when you're de dealing with difficult customers, I always say, you know, take the high road, take the high road, even when that person is getting personal, even when it's becoming combative, try to take it offline, try to do your best to resolve it. When people read through these threads of conversations and they see that you were the one trying to resolve it and that other person's being difficult, people will recognize that person for who they are. Troublemaker, a hater, whatever you want to call them, people will see them for who they are. Keep your professionalism first, handle your business. Once again, this is Curtis King at Airbit.com. Have a good one. Airbit.com Music producers, don't forget to subscribe to the Airbit channel right now.